Phil separated from Karen when his wife ran off with another man, leaving behind both her husband and their two young children. The way Phil loved his wife Karen defied any logic. The three of them had known each other since childhood, growing up in the same neighborhood. While Irene always silently sighed, looking at Phil, he sighed in the same way for Karen. Why did she stoop down to him? It was simple. Her mother persuaded her. What will your cool guys on motorcycles with guitars give you? And Phil is studying, building a career, loving you. Once again, you'll be behind him like a rock wall. Karen listened to her mother, didn't want to repeat her path when her daughter had no father and had to work hard to dress, shoe, and put food on the table. Phil didn't know why Karen suddenly decided to marry him. It didn't matter to him. Later, Ella was born, and then Mickey. Phil worked a lot, and when he came home, he took care of household chores. No one knew about it. It was their family affair. Otherwise, friends would have laughed, of course, but Phil had less and less time for fr After his wedding, his parents moved to another city. Phil didn't care. He felt like a camel carrying an unbearable load. The main thing was that his beloved was nearby, but despite everything, Karen left him and the children. You'll raise them better, she said. Well, what kind of mother am I? And I'm going to the capital with Charlie. He found a place there to play his music. He'll start in a restaurant first, and then we'll see. Anyway, forgive me, Phil. For what? He asked hoarsely. Okay with me, with the kids, so what did I do? Oh, come on. They're still small. What will they understand? Irene, Phil's loyal friend from childhood, who had always been in love with him, came to help with the children, and then somehow it naturally worked out. They started living together. Irene wanted to have her own child, but it wasn't happening, and she couldn't because of kidney problems. Don't cry, Phil comforted her. Am I crying? Irene was surprised. I have yours. I love them as my In the capital, everything went well for Charlie and Karen. He first played in a restaurant, then auditioned for a band and became a member of a musical group. And Karen, out of boredom, went to castings and got into commercials. Seeing her in a commercial, a producer became interested and invited Karen to a series for the role of a woman with a difficult fate. And it turned out she had talent. The performance was good and sincere. Phil pressed the remote and turned off the TV. Who would have thought, he said, trying to calm the tremor in his voice. Well, he won't forget that snake, Irene. Irene took the children to bed. Ten-year-old Ella turned, getting comfortable, and said, emphasizing you. I love you. Your mother me held back tears. I love you very much, too, my girl, she replied. She had really come to terms with not having her own and considered Phil's children as her own. She had a very warm relationship with Ella, but it was more challenging with Mickey. He would lose control and insult Irene, saying she was nobody and his real mom was a star. Then, after a scolding from his sister, he would come and apologize. Please, Irene, don't be upset. I didn't mean to, Irene said hugging Mickey. I'm not upset, she replied. Mickey understood no matter how hard Irene tried, but he knows that his mother Karen can't forget, can't forgive being separated from her child. And for him, Irene is an enemy, a woman who took his mom's place. Over time, Mickey stopped resenting Irene. Everything fell into place. From the very beginning of life with his new wife, Phil felt the difference. When you come home and everything is in order, there's a delicious dinner and the children are well cared for. He was almost content, grateful. Irene tried to repay for care and attention. Only one thing didn't let him rest. Phil couldn't forget Karen. He just couldn't. 
And that was it. Often at night, he lay sleepless, thinking about her remembering. It would be so much better for him if things hadn't worked out for his ex, if life had punished her for what she did to them. But everything was good for Karen, and she became infinitely distant. When will this nightmare end, and when will he stop remembering her? Ella was 16. They were preparing for graduation. Since the ninth grade, the girl had lost weight due to nervous tension, and the dress bought in advance turned out to be loose. Mom, what should I do? Ella asked sadly, clutching the fabric hanging loose at her waist. Mickey, who was lying on the couch playing something loud on his phone, habitually grimaced, as always when Ella called her stepmother mom, barely noticeable and instinctively. But it happened every time. He got used to Irene, accepted her, didn't quarrel with her, but he only called her by name. Take it off. I'll fix it for you. And that's it, Irene said. Mickey, will you help me get the sewing machine? Sure, wait. I'll finish the game in a moment. Two minutes left, Mickey replied. Ella went to the room to take off the dress. Irene disappeared into the bathroom, and then the doorbell rang. Mickey cursed and went to open it. Karen stood at the doorstep, laden with colorful bags. Well, look at you, all grown up, she exclaimed. And where's your sister? I've brought gifts, Karen said cheerfully. Mom, he hesitated, then shouted, Mommy's here. Ella, come here quickly. Ella came out in a robe from the room, holding the graduation dress in her hand. Irene stood at the entrance of the living room, very pale, placing her hand on her chest. The girl saw her confusion and went into the corridor. Why are you shouting? She asked her brother. My mom is home. Who invited you here? Karen asked. Oh, how unfriendly you welcome me, darling. And I tried so hard, carried bags from the capital on myself, Karen said. You could have not bothered, her daughter replied. And who is your mom? Let me have a look, Karen said sarcastically. Karen, throwing the bags in the corridor and patting her son on the head, walked into the apartment. Seeing Irene, she smirked. Could have guessed from childhood, peering into Phil's mouth. Well, shall we talk? She asked her. Kids, go to your rooms, Irene forced herself to say. We need to talk. Mickey, take the gifts to the room right away. I brought a phone and a proper dress for LA for the graduation. You're in the ninth grade, Karen shouted to her son. The girl, not responding, turned and went into the room. Mickey, picking up the bag, followed her. Why are you like this? I at least pretend to be happy. I tried for the sake of appearance, carried bags from the capital, her brother said. She's not my mother, Ella replied. How can you be happy, like a fool? She left us. You were only three years old back then. Irene and Karen walked into the kitchen. Karen lets dress the bull by the horns. I'll be brief. Don't worry, everything is sorted in the capital. But I want to spend a week at home with the kids. I hope that's not a... How do you imagine this? Are we going to sleep together? Irene inquired. I can sleep on the couch in the living room, Karen replied. Listen, don't get too cheeky. I haven't divorced Phil, and I'm still legally registered here. But I assume you already know that, Karen boldly declared. Irene thought about her apartment, which she kept and hadn't rented out. She didn't want to stay in the same space with Karen. She felt a terrifying fear for Phil. Not exactly the fear of losing him, but she couldn't legally kick Karen out. She was right. Guys, I'll be at my place for a while, Irene said, entering the room where the kids were. Talk to your mom. Ella, would you like to stay with me? Ella asked. Can I stay with you right away? Darling, but are you sure? Mickey protested, putting down his new iPhone. 
Ella took her dress, which Irene had promised to mend, gathered some things, and went to her stepmother. Irene breathed a sigh of relief outside and called Phil. Yes, Phil answered. Karen is at your place, she asked. Give her a chance to spend time with the kids. I'll go to my place for now, and Ella will be with me. Irene informed Phil over the phone. Where did she come from? Phil asked after a pause. She came from the capital, says she's here for a week, Irene replied. Okay, I'll come to you after work, Phil said. Really? Irene asked, feeling relieved. Of course, her husband assured her, but Phil didn't show up after work. Irene sat by the window, staring into the darkening sky. Ella came up from behind and hugged her. Mom, don't cry. They're not worth it. Ella, I'm not crying. Why would I? Irene replied. I don't want to grow up like this. Love, it's all yours. Emotions, problems, Ella declared. Irene laughed. It doesn't have to. Are you going to leave dad now? Won't you forgive him? Ella asked. I don't know, dear. I don't know anything. Irene replied, and she finally cried, dropping her head onto folded hands. Ella gently stroked her stepmother's head, sympathizing with her young and tender heart. In Phil's apartment, it was an atypical and unfamiliar evening. Karen ordered takeout. Mickey, who wasn't impressed with Japanese cuisine, said, You should have warned us, blaming Karen. Next time, we'll order pizza and cook. Can't you cook at all? Mickey asked. When do I have to cook, son? Well, when? Karen replied, tousling his hair and asking Mickey, How can I convince Ella she's not interested in gift? Phil, who quite liked the role, said, why bother, Karen? Out of principle, you're leaving anyway. Mom, can I stay with you? Mickey spoke up. Sweetheart, I'd love to, but my life is crazy and I can't cook. As you can see, when will you come again? Mickey asked. As soon as I can, I'll definitely come, Karen replied. In another 11 years, Phil snorted. Mickey, go to your room. Your dad and I need to talk. We'll order pizza tomorrow. Go, Karen told her son. Mickey sat in his room and thought that he had made a mistake somewhere. He didn't want pizza. He wanted the one Irene baked with mushrooms and tomatoes, thin and crispy. Though overall, his stepmother seemed warm and familiar, didn't she? But his mother turned out to be completely alien, unfamiliar. She didn't match the picture drawn in his head. He called Ella. What are you doing? Nothing special. We were fixing the dress. We'll go to bed. Take me with you, Mickey said. Let's do it tomorrow after school. His sister replied. It's urgent. Take him now, their brother insisted. And there was no need to yell, Mom, Mommy. Now sit there as your punishment. Ella sternly what's going on. Irene heard Mickey's voice. He's asking to be taken, Ella replied, then let him come out. I'll go get him right now. We live nearby, Irene said. Hooray, Mickey whispered. Irene is coming in the kitchen. Karen spoke, flirting. I don't believe you don't want to remember the past. We had such a good time together. Karen, you came here for the kids. Behave properly, and don't bother me, Phil said. He was afraid of losing Irene, the best wife on the planet. Hush. What's that noise? Phil said. No noise at all. Come on, Phil, Karen insisted. Yes, there is. I'm telling you, Phil claimed. He went out and heard something in the corridor, turned on the light, and found Mickey getting ready in the dark. There was a chubby backpack next to him. And where are you going? The father asked strictly. Well, it's just that. It's 11 o'clock, Phil said sternly. Irene will pick him up. We've already agreed, his son complained. 
Karen went into the corridor and looked at her son. Mickey sniffed and averted his gaze. Phil sighed, took his jacket and keys from the hangar, put on his shoes. Are you kidding me? Karen exclaimed. Sorry, Phil shrugged and they, along with Mickey, left the apartment, slamming the door. Karen returned to the kitchen, turned off the light, and watched through the window as Phil and Irene left, with Mickey walking between them. Strange, Karen thought that he would be happy to see her. She shouldn't have started all this. She should have gone on vacation to the islands, as planned. She only had a week, and then back to 15-hour shoots. This is her life, and she arranges it, Karen. At Irene's home, everyone gradually settled down and went to their rooms. Phil began to say something to her, but she stopped him. Wait, I have a buzzing in my head on nerve ground. I'll calm down a bit, and then we'll talk. But you didn't think anything, did you? Phil asked her. I did, Irene replied. How could you? Phil exclaimed. But you didn't come after work as you promised, Irene said. I just needed to see her, nothing more. Her husband replied, I understand. I'll check on the kids now and be back. At the door, Irene stopped and turned around. And what? Is your great love for her still alive? She asked with irony. Phil smiled. He realized something important today. It turns out that great love is not always important. Sometimes it's just a shadow, a shadow of the past, who pays attention to shadows. Nobody, they just exist, and they mean nothing. Ayn went to the kids. Ella was breathing evenly. She kissed her on the cheek and adjusted the blanket. She approached Mickey and started. Her eyes had adjusted to the darkness, and Irene saw how the boy looked at her in the star. What's wrong? You scared me. Sleep. Irene pulled the blanket up to his neck. Mickey grabbed her hand and whispered, forgive me. I thought you weren't my real mom, but it turns out it's all nonsense. She hesitated, leaned down, kissed Mickey on the cheek, and heard, I'll definitely learn, I promise. Learn what? Irene asked, to call you mom. 